You've got to love car companies, haven't you? I've seen this huge growth recently in advertisement for something called a self-charging car. I just think it's awesome. This magical self-charging car. It charges its own battery and reduces emissions and it's got to be the answer to everything, hasn't it? I mean, is anybody taken in by that? Does anybody really think this thing magically charges itself? I mean, it is in fact a hybrid. It's the same thing as a Toyota Prius. It's about 20 years old. It's just been retitled self-charging. When you go on the uh, website, actually, and you have a look at the cars themselves, I had a look at Lexus. It actually says self-charging in bold and then hybrid in little letters. And then it extols all this virtue about the magical ways that it can charge this battery. Then you would think it was foolish. The battery, obviously, has to be charged from somewhere. Now, you can't plug these things in, so the only way to charge it is to actually use the petrol engine that's loaded in the boot and charge up the battery. And you would think that people would ask themselves that, but actually, oddly enough, an awful lot of people think that this car will magically charge itself. And you get that quite a lot, actually. You get that with people saying, oh, all we really need is a bigger and better battery. And sure, a bigger and better battery is part of the solution. That's perfectly true, it is. But in the same way as this self-charging car, that battery has to be charged from something. Something that's going to put the energy into that battery. It doesn't magically make its own energy and suddenly a battery will be the solution. That energy's got to come from somewhere. Now, Forbes did a report, actually, in January 2021 about the state of the English national grid, and it's creaking. It's, it's really ready to fall over. Now, if I look at my energy consumption, let's say I owned a Tesla, the latest Tesla, 100 kilowatt hour battery, 300 miles of charge. Fantastic. I drive to work. Now, it means that I need for every three miles a kilowatt hour. So in a week, I'm going to use an extra 4.8 kilowatt hours. Let's say me, me and my wife both own the same car because she works at a different place. We're going to be tripling our energy consumption if we both buy electric cars. And of course, by 2030, there won't be any new car sales for petrol and diesel. They've all got to be battery or hybrid. Hybrids disappear in 2035. Not quite sure what's going to happen to the self-charging ones, but they, 2035 is the last time for any petrol car of any description. It's all got to be battery. 2030, that's only nine years away. In nine years, I'm expected to triple my energy consumption in terms of electricity. And of course, that's going to be true for everybody across the UK. And I consider myself quite frugal. So what on earth is the energy grid in the UK going to do with a tripling of energy demand? And of course, I think that's the same around the world. It's certainly this is going to be the same in the US. They're going to want a sudden increase. Now, England is not self-sufficient in electricity generation. Our consumption last year was something like, I think it was 300 terawatt hours. And our production was something like 300,000 gigawatt hours. So a lot less. Now between sort of 1990 and now, our energy imports have jumped up by about 60%. Mostly we get them from France and France produces it mostly by nuclear. That is set to triple. Given it takes about 20 years to build and commission a power plant, that's going to be a huge increase in costs. I mean, the average electricity bill in the UK is around about £720 a year. It's going to triple for me to about 2100 The average salary in the UK, take-home salary, ONS figure, about 24000 So you're looking at roughly 10% of your salary going on buying electricity so that you can pump it into your car. That's an awful lot of money, and that is going to hurt. And a battery will not help you, because that battery needs charging. It's all about generation and use as well. So we've got three sides to this problem. One side is the battery. One side is how we go about generating it. And one side is how we go about using it. That's why the, the videos have changed a bit. There's changed from batteries to battery and generation and then to battery generation and usage of things because they are the problem. And getting a bigger and better battery is not the answer. It's the same unanswer that buying a self-charging car is. A self-charging car cannot charge itself. And when you look at them, they're just a rebadged Prius with 20-year-old technology. A bigger and better battery 
cannot charge itself. That energy's got to come from somewhere. And so, to my mind, what that means is we have to look at all three sides. And that's what I think. I think we have to look at the whole thing rather than one little bit of it, which is why some of the videos have changed into some of the things we're doing, to look at other aspects of what it is that we're doing to try to improve the generation. Now, if we look at that kind of stuff, then generation by centralised generation probably isn't the answer. And Japan's looking at this in a decentralised model and what they call microgeneration, and I think that's a way forward. Microgeneration is going to be the big old deal, I think, for which batteries play a critical part. But so do the other stuff, and exactly how it is we go about doing that and exactly how it is we go about using it. And of course, that's not particularly comfortable for us. The appeal of a self-charging car is you never need to plug it in. And there are places where you can't plug in a car in order to charge it. So it's got a lot of appeal because it seems like an answer, but it's no answer at all. So a bigger and better battery seems like an answer, but actually it's only a little bit of the answer and the rest of the answer has to come from somewhere else, according to me or according to the way I think. Anyway, I thought I'd share those thoughts with you just to highlight those because I am seeing a lot of these self-charging car adverts and to be honest, they do two things. One is they astound me that they would think that anybody would fall for such an obvious scam. But then of course this is brought to you by the people who brought you the diesel emission scandal, so clearly they think in a strange way. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you enjoyed the sharing of thoughts and thank you very much for watching.